Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story today is entitled, The Hard Way. One of the things that always surprises you about the Army is the way a man tries to learn something that's hard to do. Has a lot of trouble in mass day, it comes to him just as easily as breathing. It shouldn't be a surprise because it happens so often, but I guess you never get over it. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, this message is of vital importance to every American, but it's particularly important to the young men who are listening. For today, the rapidly expanding United States Army is depending on you to do a vitally important job. Qualified technicians are needed, and the Army is prepared to train you in one of the interesting career fields necessary to its operation. You can become a radio or radar technician. You can study meteorology, mechanics, electronics, photography, and many, many others. Yes, the finest technical training schools in the world will be available to you when you enlist in the United States Army. Why not visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station today? Remember, the need is urgent. And now, your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, The Hard Way. Right now, I happen to be stationed at Fort Dix, where we're in the process of training infantry soldiers. Most of the non-coms and the officers have had combat training, and so actually they have a great deal to offer. They know from personal experience how training pays off when the chips are down. And most of the time, they get that idea across to the troops. I guess we're really hipped on training here. And some of the younger men who are newly arrived have a great deal to say about it in private. You know, being a first sergeant can be one of the roughest jobs in the Army and one of the most lonesome. You represent the officers and you represent the men. Well, that's my problem and one day I'll tell you about it. Right now, I'm reminded of a funny story. Isn't a funny story exactly. It was anything but funny at the time. It's only funny now because three of us are able to say we lived through it. So now we can laugh. I was reminded of it because I happened to overhear a couple of the men in the company sitting in the barracks and engaging in a bit of a gripe session. Well, that's one privilege all soldiers should have. They should be allowed to gripe and enjoy it. I was standing just outside the door, and I became fascinated by these two voices. Well, of all the outfits in the U.S. Army, I gotta wind up in this one. Ah, they're all the same. Yeah, don't hand me that. Listen, Benny, there's gotta be some outfits that let you live. These guys never stop. Every minute of the day, it's a class or a march or something with equipment. Yeah, they run you ragged. So what can you do, Ryan? So now when everybody's got an hour off, you and me, we have to sit here and wait for that sergeant. Yeah, oh, what does he want from us? I don't know. He just said be here. Yeah. Oh, for two cents, I'd tell him. What would you tell him, Ryan? I'd tell him to grow up and quit treating us like a bunch of kids. You know what this is like? This is like keeping us after school. Well, you're in the army. What are you going to do? Oh, knock it off. Here comes the first oh. sergeant. Oh, hello, Sergeant Barnes. What are you fellas doing here? Why aren't you out playing ball with the rest of the company? We had to give up the recreation hour, Sarge. Yeah, why? Well, Sergeant Fuller, he said so. What happened? Sergeant Fuller says we got to get more uh, practice with the M1. What kind of practice? No, oh, stripping it down and assembling. Sergeant Fuller says we can't do it fast enough. Well, if you can't do it quickly enough, you probably don't understand the weapon too well. Oh, now look, Sarge, when the company went out on that range to fire the M1, who got the highest scores? Benny here and me. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So why does Fuller always keep picking on us? Well, now, wait a minute, Ryan. Do you say that Sergeant Fuller is picking on you? No, well, uh, 
that, that ain't exactly what Ryan and me want to say, but... But you know. what? Look, if Fuller or any other non-com in this outfit is riding anybody unjustly, as first sergeant, that's my business. I want to know about it. And I'll put a stop to it. And if you're right, I'll take care of Sergeant Fuller. But if you're wrong, I'll take care of you. Well, Sarge... Now, we don't want you to get the wrong idea, Sarge, but... Oh, hello, Fuller. Hello, Sarge. <clears throat> Why have these men been deprived of their recreation hour? Because they don't know the first thing about the M1 rifle. They score highest in the company on the range. Oh, they can fire it. But they don't know how to take care of it. Mm-hmm. Do you think anyone could say you were picking on them, Fuller? You bet your life you can say it. And I'm going to keep on doing it until they know more about the M1 rifle than the guy who invented it. They'll go to sleep dreaming about it. They'll take this gun apart with their eyes closed and put it together again wearing mittens. Okay, maybe I have been giving them a hard time. If you think so, maybe you can tell them why. Ryan, is that your M1? Yes, Sarge. Let me see you break it down and reassemble it. Mm-hmm. Kind of slow and sloppy, don't you think, Ryan? I still say Benny and me can shoot this thing better than any guy in the office. Yeah, well, maybe you can. I know a girl who can drive a car better than I can, too. But let her get a flat tire, let the engine go dead on her, and she's stuck. Look, you're infantry soldiers, you're riflemen. This is the tool of your trade. You have to know this rifle inside and out, like a plumber knows a wrench. What did you plan to do this hour, Fuller? Well, I thought I'd write a couple of letters, but... Instead, I'll have to give these men some instruction. Now, wait a minute. I'll tell you what, fellow. You go write your letters. I need some practice with the M1 myself. Okay, sir. Now, look, there's an easy way to strip this gun down. But it takes practice. I want to tell you something. It's no big deal to take it apart and put it together here on a blanket. But you may have to do it in battle with half-frozen hands and an enemy shooting at you. Well, yeah. You want me to start again? No, no, no. Tell you what you do. Take a break for a couple of minutes. I'll tell you a story. Do you know Master Sergeant Truscott of E Company? Yeah? Mm hmm Well, three years ago, Sergeant Truscott and I were both sergeants in a rifle company in Korea. One day, the outfit got some replacements. And one of them was a fellow named Fuller. Our boy Fuller? The same. Fuller was a sorry-looking soldier, as I remember. He'd had about a year of training in the States, but I guess he slept through it. Anyway, he didn't take it too seriously. But here he was, in a red-hot outfit like ours, and we were up against some real classy opposition. I got wise to Fuller real fast. He was in a foxhole with a guy who had to be taken out of there in a hurry with a bad appendix. So I moved in with him for the night. I no sooner got there when things began to happen. <laughs> What's that, Sarge? What do you think it is? The 4th of July? The Reds are attacking. What are we going to do? What do you think we're going to do? What do you think we're out here for? Here they come. All right, don't sit there. Pick up that M1 and lend a hand. What are you waiting for? Pull the trigger. I did. I forgot to put a clip in. Kid, there's no point in being nervous. Put in a clip. What's the matter with you? I can't feed in the clip. I can't seem to come get... Come on, pull the slide all the way back. Push the clip down with your thumb. Let the slide fly home and you got it. Look, I gotta reload. Watch me. Well, go ahead. I got more important business. Ooh. Oh, for crying out loud. You know what happened? The slide flew home fast, pinched his thumb. It isn't pleasant. He spent the next half hour hopping around as though he'd just been given a hot foot. Fortunately, it wasn't a full-scale attack, just a raid. And we beat it off without any help from Private Fuller. After every firefight, there's always that pause, that sudden silence that sounds so strange after all the noise. Suddenly, you feel very tired, just as though every bit of energy is drained out of you. You just sit there for a minute, collect your wits. I was so glad it was over that temporarily I'd forgotten all about Fuller. But he hadn't forgotten his own performance. You could see that the guy was really ashamed of himself for not having pulled his own weight during the fight. Well, I wasn't going to let him off easy. He was trying to make excuses, but I didn't let him get too far. What are you handing me, Fuller? You had almost a year of training. You should know your weapons inside and out. Sarge, I know, but with all that firing, I just got so nervous I forgot what I had to do. 
Honest, Sarge, I just couldn't help it. Hey, Barnes, we're pulling half the platoon back for some hot chow. Get a move on. Man, I could use some hot chow. Okay, come on, you'll get some. Even though you did nothing to earn it. Just understand. When you're in action, it's natural to be nervous. Who's kidding? You're not out on a picnic. But that's the whole thing. That's where a guy's training pays off. Because that's what gives him a solid rock to fall back on. That's what we try to tell guys now. But some fellas have to learn the hard way. The fellow was a bright kid, full of bluff. During his training, he took the easy way out. He went through the motions. But he really didn't learn anything. For hours, I sat with him, showed him everything I could. Believe me, it wasn't easy. Well, I thought we had troubles, but I didn't know how bad it could get. One night, I was called back to the CP. The minute I walked in, I knew what this was going to be all about. The old man had a map of our position spread out on the table, and he was making little check marks in the area of the enemy positions. I could smell a patrol coming up, and old Barnes was sure to be in on it. The old man nodded at me and motioned toward the coffee pot. He waited till I filled my cup and started a cigarette going. And then he began to fill us in. They've been getting a plastering over on their hill, and the battalion wants to know what they're going to do about it. Are they going to send in reinforcements, or are they going to pull out? See what I mean, Prescott? Yes, sir. If they're pulling out, now's the time to sock them. So let's make sure. I figure three men can steal inside and look around and listen. Travel as light as you can. Don't look for any trouble. If you're spotted, get out fast. Now, the trouble is we're short-handed as usual. We had to pull out half of Scotty's platoon to beef up the right flank. I hate to send both you and Barnes, Truscott, but... Well, it'll have to be. Take one more man, a rifleman. Captain, I'd hate to ask anybody in my squad. All those guys have been out already these past three days. Okay, then, a uh, man from your squad, Barnes. Well, sir, Gordon's in the hospital. Kelly was out last night. Cantor's got a cough you can hear a mile away. Well, how about Fuller? I don't think he ever went out on a patrol. Fuller? Well, uh... Well, what? Everybody has to take his turn. Well, it'll be Fuller's first time. I don't think he's ready. Is anybody ever ready the first time? Now, look, Barnes, I can't ask another man to put his life on the line to take Fuller's place. It isn't right. Well, guess that's the patrol then, Barnes. You, me, and Fuller. Yeah. You, me, and Fuller. There's no moon tonight, and you'll have plenty of time. Take off right after it gets dark and be back as soon as you can. Why don't you go in now and have some hot coffee? Good luck. Thank you, sir. You know, Barnes, I think I can grab about an hour of shut eye. Where are you going? Me? I'm going to break the good news to Fuller. There's nothing in the world like going out on your first patrol. Actually, you never really get used to any patrol, but the first one is the weirdest, because you really don't know how it's going to be, and your imagination doesn't help any either. Just being in combat itself is not exactly a tonic for the nerves, but at least you're with other people, and it sets up somewhat more comfortably. You're where you're supposed to be, and the enemy is where he's supposed to be, and for whatever it's worth, you get the feeling you're part of a group. But when you're on a patrol, it's just you and a couple of other guys against the whole enemy army. And there you are, prowling around in his backyard, you might say. Well, I broke the news to Fuller, and just to make talk, I started reviewing the things that are important on a little exercise of this type. The trick is to move very quietly, very slowly... Find a place where we can look and listen and then get back. Yeah. Now, it isn't too bad. You'll see. Yeah. Look, you know what Truscott is doing now? He's fast asleep. Sleep? Mm -hmm. How can a guy sleep? Why not? That's what I'm going to do till they call us. Now, make sure you leave all personal letters and stuff back here. Nothing important on you in case we're captured. Got it? Yeah. All right. Take a nap for a while. Take a nap, Sergeant. You crazy? I'd be crazy to waste an hour. Sweet dreams, kid. <laughs> You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, The Hard Way. We'll return in just a moment for the second act.
It shall not happen here. That is the unspoken prayer of every man in the United States Army. That is the unspoken reason for our growing military might. But the time has come to speak. The time has come to tell of that small phrase, those five words, it shall not happen here. Let us speak only to those young men of America who have not taken pause to think. Let's shout it in a voice that will reach into every city and village across the length and breadth of this great land. Young men, you are needed. You are needed to help preserve the peace. You are needed to serve in your United States Army to ensure for your loved ones that it shall not happen here. And while you serve, you'll be building a rewarding career for yourself. Everyone who wears the uniform of the United States Army is sharing in a service that is vital to our country. To each belongs the individual dignity which has characterized Army careers since the birth of our nation. In the Army, opportunity is open to all on an equal basis, affording its young members of today a chance to become the technical specialists, instructors, and leaders of tomorrow. You are urged to visit your local United States Army recruiting station at your earliest opportunity and ask about the technical careers of the United States Army. Remember, the need is urgent. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of The Hard Way. Three men are about to go out on a patrol in Korea. Two are seasoned veterans to whom this is nothing new or even unusual. But the third, he's a youngster named Fuller. As Sergeant Barnes says, it's perfectly normal to be scared. But there's a different quality to the fright that possesses Private Fuller. As the three men wait for darkness, the two veterans are rolled up in their blankets asleep. And at the appointed time, they'll get up, pick up their weapons, and walk off. Fuller looks at their sleeping forms in amazement. I wish I could sleep. No, I don't. I wish as men anything. I wish I were a million miles away anywhere but here. Now look, Mr. Fuller, you have to face up to this thing. You're here and you're going on patrol in less than an hour. Now you've got as much guts as anybody in this outfit. Okay, so why are you so scared? Face it, you know why. You're a wise guy. You're always a wise guy. Even your old lady, you had her fooled. What she used to say back when you were in high school. Where are you going, dear? Ball game, Mom. Your final exams are tomorrow, you know. Yeah, sure, I know. Have you done all your studying? Yeah, Mom. When? On a bus coming home. Oh, I'm so proud of you, Bobby. I've just come from Aunt Doris's. Tommy is sitting up with all of his books. I don't think you'll get to bed tonight. I was telling Doris that all you have to do is just read a thing once. You never have to study at home. Well, go ahead, or you'll miss the game. Yeah. All I got to do is just read it once, Mom. I can remember it long enough to toss it back on an examination. Trouble is, Mom, I don't really know it. Any more than a parakeet knows it. Thought I was kidding old Lady Hastings, the principal of the high school. She was smart. Wish I knew what she was talking about. We finished grading the final papers, Fuller. That's why I sent for you. Yes, ma'am. You've scored <laughs> highest in all subjects, and so you'll be class valedictorian. Who, me? Why did you say who, me? Well, I, uh... You're not really a modest boy. If it were up to me, you wouldn't be valedictorian, but I have no choice. But if I have the highest marks, don't I deserve some... No. No, no, you don't. You have the highest marks in history, English, mathematics, science, but you don't know the first thing about any of them. You've got a quick mind, Fuller. You go through the motions, but you've never really learned anything. If you ever had to use any of those subjects, you'd be in trouble. Oh, if I could only convince you. In the future, learn, really learn, absorb. Well, I can see you don't understand. I hope you never get into trouble. Uh, 
All right, let's go. Is your time? Hey, what have you been doing, Fuller? He's been cleaning his M1. That's what he should be doing. Did you put it together okay? Yeah. Want me to check it? It's okay. Fuller, now look. You're the only real firepower we got. Truscott and I just have carbines. In case of trouble, you're going to be the solid guy. How do you feel, kid? How should I feel? We all feel good. Let's knock this one off. Truscott, Fuller, and I moved out past our own lines. We crawled through the darkness, slowly, cautiously. We only had to travel 600 yards to the enemy positions, but we were in no hurry. If it took us three hours, that'd be all right, too. It was a cold night, but there was sweat streaming down Fuller's face, down Truscott's and mine, too, if you want the truth. I think back now of what we did then, and actually all it was was just the application of everything we had learned back home. Travel slowly, steadily, do nothing suddenly. Always look for your next place of cover or concealment. And then it happened. You see, you've got a good idea where the enemy is, but you can't guarantee it. We crawled along in the darkness, Truscott in the lead, when all of a sudden we heard a gasp and Truscott disappeared from sight. I heard a groan and I knew what it was. We had blundered into one of the enemy foxholes. Fortunately, the Reds would be just as surprised as we were. There would be a second or two of nothing. And then, the people who recovered first would be the ones who would live. I jumped into the hole with Truscott. There were two Red soldiers. One had been asleep and was waking up. Truscott was grappling with the other. Don't let him make a sound. Okay. Fuller, give us a hand. I think we got these two under control. I hope nobody else heard us. Where are we? This is their line. Should be more foxholes on both sides of us. But we're bound to be spotted. Uh-huh. Truscott, put on that one's hat and see what's going on. Okay. Uh, there's some, some guys moving around outside. What are they doing? Uh, they, they look like some guys coming up to dig in. Uh, that could mean they're reinforcing. That's what the old man wanted to know. Easy! Easy! Uh -oh. Hey! Hey, there's a guy coming this way. Looks like he's calling somebody in this hole. Yeah, well, it's a cinch. He isn't calling us. You are. I get away. I... What, 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 what's he saying? I don't know. I don't understand a word of it. But it's even money. He's mad about something. Easy. Oh, he's not kidding. Here he comes. No. No, he's stopping. All right, hold it. Hold it. Yeah. Maybe he'll go away. Come down. Watch your way out. I'll eat. Hey, now what's happened? Some guys are coming over here with him. Let's open up and get. Right. Now run. Keep low. They haven't seen us. Head for that ditch. Okay, now hold it, hold it. Take it easy. They'll have to send up a flare before they see us. Okay. All right. Let's start calling back. Now, Fuller, listen. Remember what you learned about leapfrogging? I'm going first. You and Truscott cover me. Then run back. You and I cover him. Then you go back and we cover you. Yeah. Hey, for crying out loud, Fuller, what are you doing? Uh, you crazy. What are you doing to your M1? It stopped firing back there. Something's the matter. I think I know. It should only take me 15 seconds. Oh, for crying out loud. Well, what of it? You won't fire this way anyway. All the time for this to happen. Get out of here, Truscott. I still got my carbine. All right. It's okay. I fixed it. Let's go. Wait a minute. Don't you shoot back. They still don't know where we are. Hold it. Nobody moved. They shot up a flare. Oh, fine. What do we do now? We wait. We waited. We waited all night. They had us spotted all right, but every time they tried to come out after us, we fought them off. And that M1 of Fuller's helped us no little bit either. He kept loading and firing just as calm as though we were back in the States shooting at the target range. Fortunately, he was wearing an extra bandolier and he had enough ammo. One time, as I was reloading my carbine, I happened to get a good look at his face. And I could sort of sense that here was a guy who was fighting out of instinct. All the stuff we had thrown at him, he had absorbed. And now, when the chips were really down, he'd fallen back on it and was doing the right thing without stopping to think about it. Which proves the old point once again, that training is what really pays off. You shouldn't get the idea that Truscott, Fuller, and I were holding off the whole Red Army all by ourselves. By this time, we were getting help from our own lines. They were opening up with everything they had. 
Well, finally, we heard the sweet music of our mortar shells starting to come over our heads and land on the enemy positions. And before long, we got enough of a covering barrage to work our way back. When we did get inside our own lines once again, Truscott and I almost died laughing. Well, what's so <laughs> funny? <huh? laughs> you! <laughs> if you oh, could have seen how you looked with that M1 apart and you working on it... Well, I fixed it, didn't I? Brother, did you fix it? Did you fix it? <laughs> That's the story, fellas. You mean to say Fuller took his M1 apart under fire in the dark and put it together? Mm hmm. How long did it take him? Mm, couldn't have been more than a minute. And it was dark. <laughs> oh, how fast you can go when your life depends on it. You see, you have no guarantee something won't happen to your weapon. And I guess that's why Fuller is so strict about it today. You know, he. He turned out to be a pretty good sergeant, didn't he? All right, now, come on, admit it. He ain't bad. He's got his good points. <laughs> okay. Now, let me see how fast you can take those guns apart and put them together. Today, more than ever, your United States Army needs qualified specialists to fill many important and good-paying technical jobs. And to develop these specialists, the Army has created a new technical training program open to all high school graduates, a program that actually reserves a classroom seat in the course of your choice before you enlist. Yes, before you ever sign anything, you may rest assured that you can take your pick of any one of 87 Army technical career courses all taught at the finest military schools. As a qualifying high school graduate, you'll be expertly trained in such career fields as radio, photography, guided missiles, automotive maintenance, and many, many others. Name your interest, the Army has the course. You'll find that enlisting really adds up. So drop in at your nearest United States Army recruiting station. They'll give you all the facts on a great future for you. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army Recruiting Service. This is Dick Hartley speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>